Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayemi Menachai's Daf Tezayin. We're getting right on top of the Mishnah. And today's Sugi will take us into the topic of Chatzim Mater. Mefaglin B'Chatzim Mater. Will Pigle be generated if that Pigle thought was only present while he was involved in part of the Mater? The Mater is the, uh, the engine, the driver. For instance, when we have a, a mincha, we have two matirim, actually. The kaimitz, right? So the dough kaimitz, which is going to be put on the mezbeach. And we have the levaina, the portion of levaina, which uh, is also placed on the mezbeach. And both those are called matirim. The processing of both the kaimitz and levaina is what brings the mincha to its successful completion and allows for the shirayim to be c- consumed. So they are the, the providers, they are the matirim, they are the permitters. So suppose there was a, a people thought that accompanied the processing of just one of these two matirim. So you have a pigle, but it's with a partial matir. What happens now? We have a machlekes. Pigel b'kaimitz, he had a pigle thought while he was handling the, the kaimitz, while he was being maktir the kaimitz, says Rashi. So he's putting the kaimitz on his back and he's thinking, okay, I'm going to eat the shirayim leftovers tomorrow. But, but that thought did not accompany the burning of levayna on his back. Or perhaps the other way around. But Levina, the people was by the levayna's burning, but not v'loi b'kaimitz. In both these cases, Rameya Imer Pigel, it's full-fledged Pigel because as long as the Pigel thought accompanied even part of the matter that is sufficient to generate Pigel, and there is Kares if one actually consumes the Mincha material, which was now labeled Pigel, the Chayavan of Kares, the Chachamim Imer, no way, aimed by Kares, although the Mincha is possible because it was done inappropriately, but there's no, there's no Kares status applied to it. Why? Achi Fagel B'chala Matir, unless the Pigel accompany the entire matir process. In this case, both the burning of the kaimitz and the lavain. Now, certainly you made them chacham would agree to rameir in a case where all you have is one matir. Sometimes you have a mincha with just one matir. How's that? But minchas chayte, a sinner's mincha which only has the kaimitz and no lavaina. Of minchas knois, which likewise does not have lavaina. So in these cases, of course, shem pigel be kaimitz, if the pigel was there by the kaimitz, that's enough to generate pigel shu pigel. The chayavan of kares and there's kares because shakaymets are matter because you only have one matter which is the kaymets. There's no competing matter to interfere. Another example of a of a chatzim matter of a partial matter would be the two sheep on shvuis which come along with the bread. So I should say the breads come along with the sheep and the sheep are matter the breads for consumption. So once again you have a you have a case with two elements of matter, two drivers, one sheep and the other sheep. So while he was doing the shechita on just one of the sheep, he was thinking to eat the chalis tomorrow. Or in the case of the lechem aponim, where as well you have two spoons of levaina. While he was offering one of the bazicham on the mezbeach, he had a mind lechol beis darin lemachat to eat both sets of lechem aponim tomorrow. This is another example of a pigel bechatzi matir, a pigel which accompanied only part of the matir. Once again, Rameo Imer, yes, Pigel of Chayavan of Kares. If Chacham Imer, no, aim by Kares, there's no Kares actually Fagel of Chalam Matir, unless the Pigel encompasses the entire Matir process. Concludes the Mishnah on the topic of the two sheep. So while he was doing Shechita one on the sheep, he had a mind to eat this sheep tomorrow. So certainly this sheep becomes Pigel because. Uh, the pigel was present during the the uh, the shechita of this sheep, which is the matter of this sheep. Who pigel? But v'chaveri kosher. The other sheep is kosher because he's a separate animal. He's unaffected by the other animal. He's a, he's his own boss. Lecha v'chaveri lemachar. And by extension, suppose while doing shechita on this sheep, he's not thinking about this sheep. He's just thinking to eat the other sheep tomorrow. That's a non-starter. Shneim share the both kosher because. What does one sheep have to do with the other? 
basically one matir cannot be mafagal the other matir. So it's totally kosher. Back to the first case in the Mishnah. We discussed a, a fellow who had pigle thoughts by the kaimets, not by the Levina, or the opposite. It's a partial pigle. And therefore, a bear says it is. Chacham say it's not. Amar Rab says, Rab Machleik, you should know this whole discussion. Where do Rabbanu say it's not pigle? Because only, it was only part. That's in the case of Shinas and Asakaimetz Bishtika. So first, he applied the Kaimetz on Mizbeach. Shush, silent. He didn't say any pigle there. But when it came to step two of burning the Levina, then he expressed this pigle thought. Since the pigle was only there during part of the matter, during the Levina, not during the first stage of the uh, first step of the Kaimetz, it's, it's a partial, uh, it's only a partial uh, pigle, so that, that's why the Rabbanan say it's not pigle. But suppose he did step one with pigle, and by step two, he was silent. In this case, tells us Rav, we assume that he just carried on with the same you know, rules of engagement. Whatever he had in mind then carries over unless indicated otherwise. So the presumption is that his people mindset extended into the second step into the Levina as well and it's a complete pigle, nothing missing. Because when a person completes a task, he's doing it congruent to the mindset that he already established previously. So that's Rav's opinion. Shmuel disagrees, he says, you know, you never know what he had in mind. Even in this case, it's only a partial pigel, and according to Chachamim, it doesn't count. Yosef Rav. So Rav was sitting in Kamalala Shmaitim, saying over this halach of Rav, that when you start with a certain uh, mindset, we assume you're concluding likewise. Eisve Rav, Achabarav, Huna. So he had a question, the Rav. Really? It's assumed that you're completing based on the same mindset as you started? So we have a, um, a Bryce which discusses the uh, pigle happening in a mincha. When do we say that if you had a machshav of pigle during the kmitzah alone, while involved with the kmitzah alone, not the levaina, it is sufficient to generate pigle? That's only when, you see, let's just recall, the, the kaimetz has four steps. There's the act of kmitzah, putting it in a kli, walking it to the mezbeach, and placing it on the mezbeach. Now regarding the act of aktara, which is actually the topic of our Mishnah here, there we have competition, so to speak, because there's aktara on the kaimetz, aktara on the levayna. And therefore, the only way according to Chacham, you can make proper pigle is by having the machshav of pigle cover the aktara of the kaimitz and the levain because, again, this act of aktara is shared by both the levain and the kaimitz. So having in mind by one and not on the other, that's a chatziv matir, but regarding the first three steps, the act of kaimitzah, placing in a kli, walking, th- those are unique and exclusive to the kaimitz. There's no competition there. And therefore, any people thought that accompanied the kaimets, and only the kaimets, during those three steps, is a full pigle. Because regarding those activities, there is no competing entity. There's nobody else that undergoes those, those steps. So it's a full pigle and a full mater. And that's the point of the price. When do we say that pigle during the avoid of the kaimetz is sufficient? That's bikmitza, umatan kli, ubehiloch, during the act of kmitza, placing the kli, walking. So, since these activities do not apply to the levaina, the thought of pigle that accompany the kaimetz in these activities is a full pigle. Avol balay laaktara, but when he's approaching the act of aktara, which happens to the levaina as well, the pigle must cover kaimitz and levaina, the burning of the daktar of the kaimitz, aktar levaina, to be a valid pigle. 
For instance, Nasan Sakamitz Bishtika. He put the Kamitz under Mizbeach without any thought of Pigal. Then he had a Machshava about Lavoina, or vice versa. As a Kamitz Machshava, Vesel Lavoina Bishtika, so just as a side point, he started with, with Pigal. And by Lavoina, it says he was quiet. According to Rab, this should be a full fledged Pigal. Because the conclusion reflects the initiation. We'll get to that in a minute. This price seems to present it as a partial pigle, as a chatzim mata, which is subject to the machlekes in the mission. Rabbi Yehimer, it's pigle. Chacham say it's not. Rabbi Yehimer, pigle v'chayav on the kares v'chacham Yehimer aim by kares as sheifagel b'chol amater. End quote. Tani mias. Let's go back to this case just mentioned. Tani mia. The kavitz was with pigle, and the levina which followed was without. Why is that a chatzim mata according to Rav? The pigle thought that was there during the first step, is presumed to have just carried on to the second step. It's full bigel. Why is it a, considered a partial bigel? It's a full bigel. Let's uh, relearn the Bryce like this. He put the Kaimitz with a machshava after he did the Levina quietly. So it was in that order. First, quiet, and then came pigles. So that's a partial pigle. Ukvar, emo ukvar, nasan slavayna b'shtika mikara. What happened was, first, he placed Lavoina on the mezbeach quietly, without any uh, nefarious uh, plans. And then he added the kaimitz with the machshab. Certainly, in this case, it's only a partial pigle. Ask the Gemara, I have two questions on this. Che chuvis bedover. First of all, chada, then you're just repeating yourself. Chada danu kamaisa. You're telling me that the Start was Levina quiet, then Kaimitz Pigel. Well, it's identical to the first case, where it was Kaimitz quiet and Levina Machshav. In both cases, first that was on Bishtika and the second was Machshav. Why repeat the uh, same idea twice? But furthermore, Atani of the Brisa, which clearly states it otherwise, it says that the case was that the Kaimitz was placed in Machshav and Acharkach. After which the Levina was placed quietly. So, according to Rav, it's a full, full pigal. Because if you start, you conclude. Tergemar of Chanina b'shteides. Says you know why? In this case, it's only a partial pigal, because there were two kayanim involved. He was doing the the kaimitz with pigal, and the other fellow was doing the Levina b'shtika. One is not connected to the other. One is not influenced by the other. So, in this case, even though the Levina followed the kmitza which was done with Pigal, but since it's done by a different person, it's not presumed to be done, to have been done with the same mindset, but in the case of Rav, it was the same, very same kind, very same individual, who began the process with Pigal, we assume he concluded likewise. Here comes another kasha on Rav, that we assume, conclusion is like initiation, Tashma. So this discusses uh, the... Uh, Processing of the par and sir, the cow and the, and the goat on Yom Kippur, which are internal carbonates. Their blood is placed inside in many places. Actually, you go all the way to Kadesh HaKadoshim, you apply eight times from the par, eight times from the sir, then you move over to the Heichal on the Parechas, eight and eight, then over to the Mizbech itself, you uh, sprinkle on the top of the Mizbech, then to the four corners. So there are many, you know, sort of stations, many steps along the way. Now, the Bryce is discussed as pigal by um, Karbanis, and the pigal which took place during the application of blood on the Mizbeach. The Bryce tells us that, in general, a pigal thought that accompanied even just one application constitutes pigal. Even though the carbon requires many, let's say, you know, standard oil, standard chatas needs several applications. Not so many like we just discussed, that's unique for Yom Kippur. But a standard carbon needs two, four. And the pigle must accompany the, the full matter. So you would think the pigle has to be there all along. No. Even if the pigle thought accompany just one blood application, it's enough. You know why? Because really only one is critical. Only one is really essential. So technically that's called a matter on its own. When do we say that a machshava pigle? that was present during one single blood application on Mizbech is sufficient to generate pigal. That is only B'davim HaNetonal Mizbech HaChitzayin, blood which are placed on the external Mizbech, where 
only one is really essential to the kashrus of the carbon. But the bloods which are meant to go inside. Kigain, Arbaim, Vishalash, Shem, and Kippur, and the four to three Amim Kippur that we just discussed. The Parvis Sayer that are taken all the way inside. First in the Kaddish HaGadosh, eight and eight. Then in the Parechas, eight and eight. Then in the Mizbeach, seven. Then in the four corners. So in the Kaddish HaGadosh, we have sixteen. On the Parechas, another sixteen is thirty. Thirty-two. Then you have uh, seven on the Mizbeach's top surface, thirty-nine. Four corners, 43, right? Over there, each one is, is, is critical to the kashos of the carbon. Another example, another carbon that needs 11, another carbon that needs 11. In this case, you want to make pigel, make sure the pigel is there all throughout the azois. Pigel, ben berishoyna, ben mishnir, ben mishlishis. So in this case, suppose, he had a machshav of pigel berishoyna at the first phase, all the way inside the Kodesh HaKadosh. Or at the second phase, on the Paroiches. Or at the third phase, when he was holding at the Mizbeach. So that's a pigel bechatsi mater. It's a pigel that was only there during part of the matir process. Rame Oimer, still going to be pigel. As per his opinion in our Mishnah, pigel. No. It's only partial matir. Ain't by kars. There's no kars. Unless the pigle extends throughout the entire matir process. All 43 applications. End quote. At any rate, the Bryce had just related to a case where he did pigle, right? Pigle be berushayna, be mishniya, be mishlishis. Whether he, uh, he had the pigle in mind at the first station, at the second station, or at the third. So imagine, he had pigle thoughts at the first phase, but not after. Why is that a problem? Why is that a partial pigle going to rub? When you start, you finish. Upligi, we still have the same achleg as Chacham considered a partial pigle. Why? If you start with pigle, we assume that's how you're concluding. Perhaps we'll say, perhaps over here also. It's like the previous case, the first phase was done by one kind, the second phase by a different kind. Well, it's not so simple in this case. There's a whole discussion. Can a new kain, let's say something happened with the first kain, he's out of commission. Can a new kain just step in and pick up where he left off and go to the parechas and continue? Or does he have to start with a new cow? Perhaps it has to be his offering, his cow. That would work according to the opinion that when the terror stipulates that the kain god brings the, the par, the par, even if he's only have only has the blood. He can just continue with the process with that. Okay, so now we can have another kind involved that would answer the question because he's not bound to the, you know, plottings of the first kind. El Amar Par Par. But according to the opinion that Par means literally you have to have your own new cow. So you can't just start mid process. Michael Then if you're going to have a new kind, you have to start from the beginning. So it cannot be talking about two different kind involved in the same process. I'm a rubber. Says Rabbi Achmai, Skinner was speaking. Typically, if the pigle was there at the outset, we assume it just carries on. But in this case, he indicated otherwise. He indicated he doesn't want the pigle to carry on because he did pigle at the first stage. At the second stage, he was quiet, and then he re-expressed his pigle at the third stage, which is a strong indication that he only wanted pigle at first and third, not at the second stage. So we can't assume anything. Presumptions are out the window because he indicated otherwise. I mean, we say, based on his conduct, if in fact we are to assume that in this case as well, we will apply the above mentioned formula. You start, you conclude. When a person concludes a job, it's assumed to be on the same track as he started. Well, not in this case. Why does he have to re express his pigle at the third stage? It's assumed, apparently. He's indicating otherwise. Mask of the Ravashi says Ravashi midashadach tani. Since when is the Bryce speaking that he was silent in the middle one? Bryce doesn't say that. That he started with pigle, ended with pigle. He's quiet in the middle. That's a creative case, but it's not reflected in the word of the Bryce. El Ravashi. So Ravashi offers another solution. My skin was speaking the case. Gonshe pigle brishoyna ubishnia mishasa mishlishes. 
So you express this pigel at the first stage, at the second stage, but not at the third stage. Damrina. So in this case, we again conclude, based on his behavior, in fact, the assumption is, said that when you just continue, you're carrying on from what you started. So why do you have to express himself the second time as well? He could have just had pigel the first time. We assume it all carries on. So the fact that he expressed Pigel the first time and the second time, but was quiet the third time, indicates that the Pigel was only meant to be there the first and the second and not the third. And as Tysus points out, the Kasha that we just had before doesn't really apply here because, you know, when you start with Pigel, end with Pigel, and Shasak in the middle, the Bryce should have said it, but here, He's not, you know, deviating. He's not coming in and out and in. So, uh, it can be learned into the words of the Bryce. First stage was with Pigel, second stage with Pigel, and the third time he was quiet. Ask the Gemara, but again, you know, we have a semantics problem. Look at the wording of the Bryce. It says either or, which sounds like he didn't have Pigel expressions in two separate, you know, places. It was either in there, or here, or here, which is inconsistent with Ravashi's chat as well. Vabain, Bain Katani, the writer says it was either here or there, not in two places. Kashi, in fact, that's an unresolved question. Okay, so bottom line is, when there's Pigel Bechatsi Matir, Ramirez says it's Pigel, Ham say it's not. Several examples were Kaim, it's not Levaina. One sheep and not the other, one bazich and not the, one bazach and not the other. But Rav tells us a chiddush. But in a case where he started with pigel, he doesn't have to express it all along. We assume if you started that way, you concluded with the same mindset. That's where Shaina is. Let's go back to the um, rice that we just discussed regarding the pigel that was there during the Hazor Saddam. If the pigel was there in the Kaddish HaKadoshim, and not in the Heichel, not in the Mizbeach, Ramir says it's still pigel. Now the question is like this. He's not finished doing the Hazor of the Dam. He has to take it out to the Heichel and apply blood there. He has to walk over to the Mizbeach and do the same. Well, the blood now is worthless. It's water. It became disqualified because of the pigel thought that he had in the Kaddish HaKadoshim. He's going to try to use the same material to conclude the Hazor of the Dam. How can he do that? So, you can't ask this question in a, in a mincha setting. Let's say he did the, you know, uh, the kmitzah with the machshav of pigel. Well, how could you continue doing the aktara and conclude the process with invalidated material? Well, no, because this kmitzah was done with pigel. You're done with that avoda. You're not trying to carry on with that same avoda. That was very sort of disqualified. But here, you're not done the azor of the dam itself. As we explained, the azor encompasses a very big uh, project here. It's 43 times. So when he had Machshava Pigel in the Kedusha Gadashim, he disqualified the blood for further carbon use. Now he's going to take it out and try to continue in the Parochis and Mizbeach. How does that work? Yeah, it's Pigel. Now the question is, we learned this many times. For Pigel to be considered a successful Pigel, so to speak, which is accompanied by courage, there can't be any other interfering factors. It has to be properly Pigelized. <laughs> yeah, with Pigel being the only problem, you can't have any other interfering issues. Machshava Pigel should be the only issue, but otherwise the carbon was fully processed and completed. That's how you make Pigel. But not when the carbon is aborted mid- midway, like in this case. Mirti, look, Karis le Mikhaev, Karis will only apply at Shikru Kamaha Matirin. Until the Matirin, in this case, the blood is properly processed. Dharma, as we learned, Yeratza. The Pasak uses Lush and Loy Yeratza by Pigel, and we learned that Yeratza means, although it's in a negative, but it, it needs to be successfully processed in terms of the steps along the way. Karatsas kosher, kachatsas pasal, just like a properly processed carbon needs to be properly processed. Likewise, the uh, the pigel carbon. Mar, tzos, kosher, just like a 
kosher recurve and call material. It's only considered successful if the material were pro- properly processed. Af Hartsa as possible likewise uh, by a pigle carbon it's only going to be pigle until the mat- unless the material are fully processed but hi now in this case we don't have that given the hush but if name once he had a machshav of pigle while handling the blood inside a kadesh kadesh and pasta he now made this blood possible you can't use it for any further applications now he walks over to the hechel and he sprays the blood it's like he's spraying water worthless material how are you going to have people? I'm a rabbi. You're right. We're speaking that he had a new carbon, a new animal for the hechel. The old blood spilled out, whatever. So, it can happen by four cows and four goats, one pair for each stage along the way. So, you're not trying to use the old dam, the recycled dam. You're, trying to, you're using new blood to continue the process. You know what? You don't have to come on to four or to eight. Even if he's going to use the same blood of the same old, you know, pair of the pyrosur. It's not considered worthless material. What, what's the issue? That this blood that you're trying to use further was involved in a pickle experience? Look, for the sake of processing a pickle carbon, even pigle tainted material is considered appropriate. It's considered carbon material within a pigle carbon to be considered for further processing of that very carbon. Interesting twist. Le figule marazzi. It is considered successfully processed regarding pigle. Okay, now one more side point, a numbers question. A total of 43 applications are buying Bishalish Atanya. There's a Brisa which actually cites the number at 47, Abar Mesheva. So which one is it? Like Kasha, well the answer is it depends. We mentioned that they put the blood on the four corners of the Mizbeach, but we have two bloods, the Par and the Sar. Do they do them separately? So you get another four. Or to get mixed together, so it's a, it's a question of four more. How come on the one that says 43? That's because we mix the two bloods together for the corners. So you save yourself four. But how come on the Amar the other shita holds that they're applied separately, so that it adds four. Another numbers question is we have 43, 47. What about a Brisa which says 48? How do you get another one? Vatanya, Abar, Mishmaina. Like Kashi, the answer is the leftovers on the bottom of the Mizbeach. Like Kashi. How come on the Amar Shrein Ma'akfin? 48 is. Uh, reflective of the shita that pouring the leftovers on the Mizbech is, is critical to the process by these carbonates, so it counts in. Huh, but the uh, the Bryce, which speaks about 47, it doesn't count this one in Kumadama, like the shita, that Shrayim of Akvin, pouring the Shrayim is not essential, is not critical, and it doesn't count in as a pigle, uh, you know, requirement. Okay, so in general, regarding a, a Mincha, there are some activities which involve the Kaimat and Levina. So in those activities, like let's say the Haktara, the Pigal must accompany the Haktara of the Kaimat and Levina to consider a complete Shirayim, a completed Pigal, otherwise you're running into the question of Chati Matar. But the act of, of Kmitza, which is unique to the Kaimats, it has no competition. The of Pigal there is a complete Pigal. Matan Kli as well. What about Haylacha? That's an interesting question. Walking it, you know, delivering it to the Mizbeach. That technically applies to the Levina as well. You've got to bring it to the Mizbeach. So what's the status of the of the Avoid of Haylacha? So he's doing a Lacha by the Kmitza and he's thinking Pigal. And limited his Pigal to the Lacha of the Kmitza. Didn't think so by the Lacha Levina. Is that a partial pigal? You would think, yeah, let's see. So the question was asked. Pigal by Lachamal. He had pigal thought by the Allah of the Kaimits and only by the Kaimits, not by the Levina. Amar Byechnan, Halacha Kikmitza, just like by Kmitza, which is unique to the Kaimits. The pigal over there is a full pigal, same with the Halacha. We'll see in a minute. Reshlaka Shamana, Halacha Kaktara. 
just like the act of Akhtara, which involves both Kaimis and Albaina. People must apply to both as well. Same thing with the Yalacha. Okay, we understand Rishlakish, Ikanami Yalacha to Levaina, because the act of Yalacha applies to Kaimis and to the Levaina. So the people has to relate to both. El Rabbi Yechanan, my time. But how do you understand Rabbi Yechanan? Omar Rabbi Kasar Rabbi Yechanan holds that really the act of Yalacha isn't essential. You can choose to. Uh, Start the mincha right near the mizbech. You don't have to walk to the mizbech, so technically you can get around it. And then Rabbi Yechon holds, even if he chooses to walk the kaimis to the mizbech, and he chooses to walk the levai to the mizbech, since it's not really an integral part, it's not a necessary, critical part of the process, because as we explained, you can get by without it. So it's not really a shared experience. Because again, you don't have to do it to begin with. So, if you're doing it with the kaimitz, it's a complete act, complete activity. It's not a shared activity, it has no competition. Let's see. Because a materis. An act which is not technically considered a matir, Rashi says. Rashi said you can just pass it over. You have people stand line up and pass it to each other. So it's not really an avoda which is a matter. Avoda chashuvahi. So ironically, <laughs> it gives it prominence. Lefagel oleh b'fnei To allow people to take place, to take hold, in fact, during this avoda alone. Meaning, By, by an act which is called a matir, like a, like a typical matir, like haktara, that is shared by two elements, haktara of the kaimetz, haktara of levayna, each one is only a half, but by a lach, which isn't really critical to begin with. It's not really a matir, per se. So, Nobody gets in his way. Levine won't, won't get into the, 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 the Kaim Mitzvah's way. So, as long as the Pigal was there during the Halach of the Kaim Mitzvah, it's a full and complete Pigal. I'm going to buy a response to Rabbi Yechon. You mean every time you have an Avaidah which is not technically a matter? The pigle which accompanies that is enough, is considered complete, even though there's another element to speak of because they don't compete with respect to a non matter activity. Yeah, the two sheep that accompany, that, that come together with the breads. So he shechted one of the um, kvasim to eat the breads tomorrow. And that's an example that we had in the Mishnah, which is called a chati matter. Right, it's a partial matter, but really he did it during the shechita. Now shechita is not a matter. The zrika is the matter on the basar and the imur, and the shechita is just a preparatory act. he, and you think all agree that the pigle that accompanied the shechita is a full pigle, even though it was only during one sheep, not the other. Right? But it's untrue. Pligian, we have a machlekes in the Mishnah. Hacham say it's not a complete pigle. Look at the other sheep. Who cares about the other sheep? I'm not doing a matir, I'm doing a shechita. Which is a standalone, you know, item. This not. Remember the Mishnah? Shachad echad na kvasim, lechash techalas lamachar, hikdir echad na mezichan, lechash nisar lamachar. Remember, it's pigle. With kareis, v'chayav na lakareis. V'chacham, I don't know, ain't by kareis, that's shifag alchal matir, because it's only a partial matir. Amr Leis, Rabbi Yechon responds. He says, no. You think the Shechita is not a matter? Of course it uh, has the power of a matter. This was, um, Rabbi had given the explanation, and Abayi asked him, and now Rabbi is responding. He says, look, Misavris, Amr Misavris, Lechem Batar of Kadesh. Of course the Shechita is a matter. You think the breads become Kadesh by being baked in the oven? 
No, shechita is kvasim mekachli. The shechita of the kvasim. That's the alacha. They're mekadesh the breads. So the shechita is accomplishing very much. And therefore, you need both sheep involved. It's a joint effort. So a pigle by one is not sufficient. That's a chati matter. Vabala kadesh kabala hatu dami. An act which is being mekadesh is like matter. He's providing. He's generating. And therefore, the pigle has to accompany both sheep. Most of the but except as opposed to the um, just the contract, as opposed to the halacha, which is nor a mater nor a mekadesh, is something that circumstantially is just being done. So when the kmitz is being taken, and he had a mashav of, of a pigel, it's a full pigel. He's not missing anything. Most of the Ashi have a question, a similar question regarding Karban pesach. some say So let's say he had a shechita. And he did the uh, simon, first simon, you know, the, um, let's say the esophagus, and then the windpipe. So the first one he did um, with the following plan in mind, to uh, feed the, uh, the carbon pesa to mulim, those who had experience at brismila, who are suitable, right? La reilam, and then he went on with the second uh, part of the shechita, having in mind to feed it to those that are areil. So the mulim came before that reilam, it's kosher. But, since he started with Arelim, initially he was thinking, I'm going to feed it to Arelim, then he switched over to the Mulim Pasal. <coughs> because during the first simon, he only had Arelim in mind. Now, in the first case, we assume that he had a mind, even during the second simon, to feed it to Mulam. He just added Arelim. In the second case, he started strictly with Arelim. He left Mulam out of the picture. Higdim Arelim Mulam, it's pas. V'kaimulam. And we have the, an explanation that we uh, learned on this, on this uh, halacha. The Bechati Matir Pliki. This halacha that it's pas, it's only like a mayor. Who says that we reckon with half a matter? In this case, one simon is like a half a matter. So an invalid thought that accompanied the processing of a half a matter is to be reckoned with. So back to the same question. Since when is shechita a matter? It's just a preparatory act. So why does that relate to the halacha of chati matter? Only Ramir considers it a problem because he says chati matter is important. Chacham say no. It's only half a matter. No harm was done. What do you mean? But in this case, it's not technically a matter. It's a shechita. So any part of the shechita, which was problematic, should be uh, detrimental to the, uh, to the carbon Pesach. Just like over here, we're saying that the pigel that was there during the halacha ruins the whole mincha, amalei. So again, a similar answer. He says, Misavris, dam betzavar ve'im Do you think the blood of the carbon becomes kaddish through the neck? Dam tzakin mekachalei. It's the knife, the klisharis, that's mekaddish, the blood within the carbon. So the shechita is actually accomplishing very much. When you're Avim Akadosh, like you're Mater. You're accomplishing, you're generating. You're the driver. And therefore, Pigel has to be there during the entire Mater. Well, in the case of the carbon Pesach, the invalid thought has to accompany the entire Mater, both, uh, both Simonim, otherwise it's Kosher. Okay, let's just go back for a minute to the machlekes that we had between Rabbi Yechon and Rish Lakish regarding pigel that was there during the halacha, the transporting of the of the kaimitz, and not by transporting the levaina. Rabbi Yechon says it's pigel. Rish Lakish says no, unless you had pigel thoughts during the transporting of the levaina as well. Tashmai comes a kash on Rish Lakish, who says that there is no pigel by halacha of the kaimitz. Tashma, by medvam amurim. So we had the brayso before. When do we say that the pigel that was there during the kaimitz and not by the levayna is sufficient to make pigel? That's only bekmitza, bebatakli, behiluch. If the pigel was there during the kmitza of the kaimitz, which has no competition, matankli of the kaimitz has no competition, ubehiluch. Whoa! And during the hiluch of the kaimitz, my lab hiluch laktara. We're assuming that it was during the transporting of the kaimitz to take it to the mizbeach laktara. Hiluch laktara, and we see. The pigel that was present at that point is enough, despite the fact that 
It did not relate to the Levina. That's right, Rabbi Yechanan. Loi! Hiluch the Matan Kli. The Hiluch means a different Hiluch. He was bringing it to the Kli, to place it in the Kli. So he's doing the Kmitzah, then Hiluch to the Kli, then he's going to put it in the Kli, and then Hiluch to the Aktara. You're right. This initial placement, this initial transporting is unique to the Kaimitz. And therefore, it's a full pickle. Yach, if that's the case. And the Raisa seems to be out of order. Raisa says, Kmitza, Matan Kli, and then Hiluch, which sounds like Hiluch took place after Matan Kli. On the way to the Mizbeach, which is something which is joined by the Levine as well. Yach, if Matan Kli, Ubi Hiluch, why did it say it like that? It should say the other way, Be Hiluch, Ubi Matan Kli, Mibayel, it should have said Hiluch to the Kli, and then place it in the Kli. It took place at that point. You're right. Let's switch around the words. Okay, but the Brisa continues. So we're assuming, let's assume. He did Kmitza. Then we have Hiluch to the Kli. Then in the Kli. And now what's the next step? Hiluch to the Mizbech. No, the Brisa skips it. Goes straight to Akhtara. What happened to Hiluch to the Mizbech? Which according to you wasn't discussed yet. The Brisa should have related to the Allah. Halakasha. Again, that could be answered. It's really all one and the same activity because you're taking a Turim as Be'ach HaKtar and the Brayse alluded to it that way. Keeping the Elach HaTar HaKtar since walking through Be'ach is to prepare it for HaKtar Kari HaKtar the Tana calls it HaKtar even though it really means the Elach HaTar HaKtar or the HaKtar itself. But we still have another Kash. Ela Nosen Sakamitz Vishtika the Brisa continues. Right, so if you're telling me that um, Haktara is not Haktara, over here it means walking into the Mizbeach, but when the Brisa describes what he actually did, El Nasan, as the Brisa says, he placed the Kaimis on his Mizbeach quietly. We're not talking about Haktara. We're talking about walking into the Mizbeach. Hoylich, we barely. Brisa should have used different language. He walked it to the Mizbeach. If we're talking about walking to the Mizbech, Kashi, in fact, is an unresolved question on the wording of the Brayas according to Rish Lakish. Okay, so in summation, the Pigal has to encompass the entire Matir activity, and if there are two Matir, it's to cover both, according to the Rabbana, according to Rameh, even one is enough. So when handling the Kaimets, during the Kmitzah, the Matan Kli, Certainly, there's no competing element there, because that only happens with the Kaimans, so Pigal there is sufficient. Regarding Haktara, that's certainly a joint effort involving the Kaimans and Levina, so the Pigal has to cover both. Regarding Allah, we have a Machlikas. Here comes one more piece. This fellow did something very interesting. He took the, uh, the Kmitza, which let's say is an ounce of material, and he did a little piece at a time. Some shumshum, a little sesame-sized, minuscule <laughs> piece of the haktar at a time. And not only that, he had big plans. While he was being mocked, there's a little piece of the Levi, of the kaimets. He's saying, oh, I'm going to eat a little bit of a shirayim, very little, a sesame-sized uh, piece tomorrow. And he does that repeatedly until he finishes the whole kaimets. A little piece at a time. Hector, shumshum lechel shumshum. Okay, a little piece to eat, a little piece tomorrow. Another little piece of akhtara to eat, another little piece tomorrow. Ashakala kamitz kumla until he finished the entire kamitza like that. And did the same with the levaina. So there was no issue of partial. He covered the whole thing. But it was piecemeal. <laughs> Is this going to be pigal? Three shites. Rav Chizda, Rav Amnuna, Rav Sheshis. Three opinions. Chad Amar, Pigal. One says, yeah, it's Pigal. Chad Amar, Pasal. It's only Pasal. Chad Amar, the other one says, it's Kasher. How do we explain this? Lema. We have a theory. Man, the Amar Pigal, Kramir. The one that said it's Pigal. It's like Ramir. Even though his Pigal only encompassed a little piece at a time, that's like Chati Mater. It's still going to be Pigal. Man, the Amar Pasal, Kraban. The one that says it's Pasal, it's like the Rabban. It's not Pigal, but it's Pasal. Man, the Amar Kasher, Kerebi. The one that says Kasher, like Rebbe, which told us yesterday, if you doubt, that you can't combine pieces. Is that the case? Mimai, how do you know? Dilma, perhaps, it's unrelated to those three opinions. Ad kan lakam rameer, hasam el dachisha b'shiurai. Perhaps rameer, who says that the pigal on half the matter is sufficient, that's because he had a shir, he had a kazayas, he had something to talk of. But over here, it's a little teeny piece. Not a shir. 
So when he, when he was machashev b'shiuri, while offering a proper amount of aktara, which qualifies as an aktara, that makes uh, like the full kaimas, that's, that's truly pigal. But here, the machshava accompanied a little pea-sized, sesame-sized piece of kaimas, that's not an act of aktara, that can't generate a law. Who says that makes pigal? Furthermore, va'ad kan the rabban hosam, perhaps the rabban only say that uh, pigal by half the matter is not sufficient hosam, that's only because he didn't end up thinking pigal throughout the whole matter. He stopped by, half, by the halfway point. Avalach, but over here, ultimately, his machshava spread throughout the entire uh, kaimetz. At the end of the day, it covered everything. Maybe it's pigal, chanami, the pagal. Furthermore, Vaad Khan Lakama Rabbi Hasan, perhaps regarding Rebbe as well, who says you can't combine bits and pieces, Ella Loyhadamali Moisa Avoida. He never filled up the Kazayas. So what happened was over there he did a shkita with a half a Kazayas in mind, and then he did other shkita, another half. So each one wasn't a full Avalach, but over here. When he finished the Kaimits, he had a mind to eat the uh, all the shrine tomorrow. He covered himself completely. He filled it up during this same activity. Ultimately, he covered the share of Kazayas. It took him a while, but perhaps it would be possible. So basically, our discussion is really unrelated to all those other discussions. So how then do we explain these three opinions? Elamandam are the pigal. Rather, let's go like this. The one that said that's pigal. Again, what's the case? While he was offering the Kaimis and Mizbech, he did a little piece at a time. A little piece with a machshav of pigal and a little piece of shirayim, and so on and so forth. So perhaps the opinion that holds that as pigal will follow all shittas. I won't see in a minute why. According to the one that says pasal, it's also perhaps consistent with Rebbe, the Rabban, and Rameer. It's unrelated to those discussions. Because here it's a unique case with unique parameters. Umanda Amar, Kasher, likewise, one that said it's fine. Again, he's following all those shittas. He says, I hold kasha like everybody, because it's a unique circumstance, as we'll explain in a second. Madam Pigal, how do we explain why it's Pigal? Dibrakal according to all opinions, Kasavar Derachilibakh. Although he's doing it in a funny way, a little piece at a time, that's Derachak Torah. You can be mocked it like that, so it qualifies as a Pigal generator. And it's also Derach to eat a little piece at a time, so um, so it's checked off as an act of pigal, as a as a uh, pigal generator. Uman or apostle, the one that says that it's only apostle, Divrakoil, again, that's consistent with Rab Meir and the Rabbana, it's unrelated to those discussions. It's a local factor here that we're talking about. Kosovar, Derachilabakh, He says, although it's a way to eat, a little at a time, but it's not a derech to be like that, so you can't make pigle like that. It's only possible because, you know, it's close to pigle, but it's not really pigle. Oh, the reason why it's possible is because it was not offered properly. It was not burnt properly. It was a little at a time. It's not an act of a proper act of Torah, so it's possible. Umadam are kosher. And finally, the one that said it's fine. Udivir Akoyal, according to all those opinions, he says, here it's different, here it's kosher. Because he holds kasava derech hakter bekach. Yeah, you can be machte like that, so it's a proper mincha. Uh, on the one hand, ve'ender hachila bekach, but nobody eats this way. So when he thought of eating it this way, I'm eating uh, a little bit tomorrow. And then he thinks again. I'm thinking a little bit. So you, it's not an act of, it's not a proper act of eating. A little teeny piece at a time is not is not considered a proper mas achila. So since he didn't think about eating it. Properly, it doesn't generate pigle, and it's fully uh, fully kosher. So you have a good mincha. <laughs> okay, all the best to you, and that's lacharab.